Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today's video, I thought it would be fun to go over some of the What's Up Beauty products. So I purchased both palettes, the Geodes palette, as well as the Desert Monsoon. And then I do have their eye brush set. This is the one for more hooded eyes that recently came out. So I'm gonna go over details of these products, insert in some swatches, and then pull you a little bit closer, maybe do one look on each eye with each palette to just kind of test it out, see what it's all about. I've never tried this brand before. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't yet. But now let's just go over details and swatches of these products. All right, so let's first go over these brushes. So they do retail for $138. They're made in Japan and they're a mixture of goat and synthetic hair. Here is what the set looks like. So you have a very small flat definer brush, a dome brush, a more fluffy crease brush, a pencil brush, a small shader, and then more of like a medium shader. I will say that I appreciate just how short these handles are. I don't like brushes that have just obnoxiously long handles. I'm always banging it into my mirror because I have to get really up close. And something else that I just really liked is on the box here, it actually says what kind of material that the brush has. I don't know if you can see that if it's focusing, but that's something I haven't seen before. And it might sound like a very small detail, but I am not a expert when it comes to natural haired brushes, synthetic brushes, any of that. So I like the fact that it says goat hair on here or the ones that say goat hair and synthetic hair. It just really helps me know what kind of brush and then what you can use it for. Because in comparison, you know, the only other just natural hair brushes I have are Ruffer and Sonia G. I wanna take care of my expensive brushes and some of the Sonia G brushes I know can't be used with creams. So I have to make sure that I mark them and don't use them with creams so I'm prolonging the life of the brush. And that's just like a long tangent, but I do appreciate what they say the brush is made of because I don't wanna ruin these. $138 is quite expensive. You can also purchase them individually for $23. And then I do wanna say that I purchased all of this myself at 40% off. I've noticed that What's Up Beauty does do a lot of sales. So personally, if you want my recommendation, wait for a 40% off sale, but those are the brushes. I'm gonna try my best to exclusively use these today and just get a feel for them. If I need to reach for another brush, I will. But now let's go over the geodes because this packaging is so gorgeous. I love it so much. I'm going to cut over to my swatch photo and go top to bottom, left to right. And we have the shades Rock, Crystal, Amethyst, Citrine, Pyridot, Clay, Rose Quartz, Agate, Ronadite, Earth-like, Lava, and Terra. This is just so springy. I love that you just have these neutrals to ground the palette, and then you have these just more colorful toppers. You know, similar vibes maybe to the ABH Cosmos, similar. Like I had this one, so I wasn't really interested in getting the Cosmos. I'm not saying they're exact dupes, but to me, they're very similar and I prefer this color story over the Cosmos. And then going over the Desert Monsoon, and I believe that this was their first palette, just not as popular. So again, going from top to bottom, left to right on swatches, we have Glow, Canyon, Desert Rose, Succulent, Downpour, Thunder, Dust Storm, Humidity, Sun, Cactus, Tempest, and Joshua Tree. Now this one is, you know, I want to say it's like a more fall palette. I'm just using this to block the mirror here. But I think this is a good year-round palette. I really like this color story. You have lighter tones, you have some darker tones. Again, just like the neutrals to ground it. This brand is based in Arizona, which is primarily where I grew up and live. 
I now live in France, but I actually, they have a brick and mortar store in the Chandler Mall. I worked there for primarily my career. It's actually not that store clearly, but at Chandler Mall is where I got my very first job and I stuck with that job for 10 years. So it's a little bit just, it pulls at my heartstrings a little bit. I will say that it's definitely what got me interested in picking up this brand. I had been inside the store many, many times. They actually started out as a nail store. They do sell indie nail polish. They have their own nail polish line. Highly recommend checking them out for their nail polish supplies as well. So when they branched out into beauty, I was just, I was so excited for them. It's very cool to just kind of see that and see how small the world is. I like that. But that's all the info on these palettes and the brushes. Now I'm gonna scoot you in a little bit closer and just kind of test out the formula, see what I think. Okay, I'm gonna kind of just clip my hair back. Now, obviously I already have the rest of my makeup on. I will link everything that I'm wearing down below in the description box. That didn't really work, did it? So most of it is in my most recent Shop My Stash. Some of it's from Project Pan, but it will be down in the description box. So I think I'm gonna kind of keep this simple, not make it too long of a video and do one look on one eye and one on the other with both palettes. So let's maybe start with Desert Monsoon. And like I said, I'm gonna try and just stick with the brushes in the set. They do have another brush set, their first one, but I wasn't as interested in picking that up. I've recently been acquiring a lot of brushes, so I just, I didn't need more brushes and they didn't look as good as the one specifically for hooded eyes. So I really did not plan out what I wanted to do with this, but I think that I kind of maybe don't want it to mismatch too much. I really wanna use Tempest here as well as Succulent. So maybe I'll do kind of, Tempest is a matte. I'm gonna maybe do Joshua Tree in the crease and then use this to line. We'll use this in the outer corner to darken it up and kind of put these two all over the lid. Let's just see where we go. My only question is if I have a big enough crease shade, but I think that it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna start with Joshua Tree. It does pick up pretty well on the brush here, so no complaints. And I have to keep my eyes open since they are hooded to just make sure in the beginning my placement's in the right spot. I just kind of map out my shape. I do not have any eye primer on. I probably should have done that so I don't have too much fallout since I already have the rest of my makeup. But honestly, I meant to and I forgot because I was just too excited to put this on my eyes. So it is what it is. But right now, no fallout. I mean, we'll see what happens with the glitter shades. I'm hoping, I haven't swatched it yet. Obviously, I already saw my swatch photo, but I do that afterwards once I'm editing the video. I'm hoping that they're more like toppers. So now that I've gone into Joshua Tree, I'm now going to take the same brush. So this is the R108, go into Tempest. I'm gonna just tap this kind of on the outer corner. It's not as deep as I was thinking it is, that's okay. So I'm gonna blend it over. So I brought Tempest all the way over, maybe about 75% across my lid. Try to focus most of the color here, but I don't wanna look like I have pink eye. So I am gonna take Canyon now, which is more of like that medium brown. And I want to just deepen up the outer corner. And I'm mostly just trying to stamp just so that pink still peeks through, but it's a little bit deeper. That's exactly what I want. And I am gonna have to reach into another brush. This is the BK212. It's just a big fluffy brush. And I'm gonna go into Dust Storm, which is kind of just a cream color. 
I'm gonna diffuse the edge here just because I want it a little bit more blown out. I have hooded eyes, but I have so much space from my brow to my lid that I find it hard to like find the right proportion to not just blowing it out too much. There, I like that a lot. So now I think I'm gonna go into succulent, kind of put that more, I don't really like that word, I'm gonna be honest. Okay, and then I'm gonna go kind of like outer half here, just like that. That shade is really pretty. It looks a lot darker in the pan. It's much more pinky, and that might be because I had the pink just a smidge underneath it. And I have zero fallout, like none, absolutely none. I love that. Okay, and then I'm gonna go into humidity, which is kind of more of a purple pink in between succulent and desert rose. Make sure I have the right finger and put that on the inner part of my lid. Keep this super simple, but I at least tried out a few shades. Kind of just make sure those two go together. This is everything that I wanted and more. Before I line my top lash line, I think I'm gonna do the bottom and just go into Joshua Tree with the pencil. And it's a very narrow pencil brush and quite longer, I feel like, than other pencil brushes that I have. And I'm gonna just closely run that along the lower lash line. Make sure to kind of connect it. And then I'm gonna go back into that crease brush just make sure that it's connected and looks good. Now I'm gonna take the R112, the very small flat definer brush, go into Thunder and just run this along the upper lash line just for like a little bit of definition. Just make my lashes look a little bit thicker. Nothing too crazy. This brush is really good for that. I like this a lot. And then I'm gonna put just a tiny, tiny bit on the bottom lash line. I don't like too much of a really dark, smoky lash line, so that's why I kind of stick with one color, so. I wanna make sure it looks cohesive. Last step is gonna to be to take the 111, the very, very small shader. I'm gonna go into Glow, and I'm gonna pop that in the inner corner. So here's the finished look with Desert Monsoon. I think it was really fast, really easy, simple. I used pretty much all the shades in here other than Downpour. I didn't use Downpour, Cactus, Sun, and I didn't use Desert Rose. So I used six out of the 10 shades, not terrible. Pretty simple look overall, I like it a lot. Before I do mascara, I'm gonna do the second look with the Geodes palette. So let me just clean my brushes a little bit and we'll get to the second look. I cleaned my brushes as best I can with my switch. I mean, there's still color on here, but I don't think it'll affect the look. Now for this one, the Geodes palette, I'm kind of thinking I want to, now that I'm looking at them both, trying to come up with a look, they're very actually similar color stories. Just this is lighter and brighter, but you still have like the purples, the pinks, the browns. You still have like this green here, which I just dipped my brush into. So I think I'm gonna kind of try to just recreate this look, but with the colors in this palette. So, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start off with rock and put that in my crease and just again, shape out my lid. This just has like the browns are a little bit more neutral 
kind of leaning cool. They just have more of that pinky tone in them. But I really like there's that shade clay that just has like this earthy oliveness to it. But yeah, this is definitely much more pink and actually much more pigmented, I feel like, than this side. And there's no kick up in the pan, just so you know. I didn't say that with the Desert Monsoon, but I'm finding with both of these, I'm having just no kick up. So now I'm gonna go into Rhodonite. I think that's how you say that. I'm sure someone will correct me if not. And I'm gonna do that like I did with the Tempest shade, just kind of pressing in the outer corner to get the most color and then bringing it in. This one's less pigmented. This is more of like a crease shade. I'm not mad at it. I'm just trying to recreate the look or do similar so there's not kind of the same vibe for that pink, but that's okay. This is doing the job. Just kind of follow that. Now I'm gonna take Terra which is the deep dark brown, and now add the definition. So still pressing right here to get the majority of the color and sweeping it in like I did with Rhodonite, but a little bit softer, not as much. And I'm gonna kind of flick it out. I might need to clean it up at the end. It's hard for me to see. This is like my hardest corner to see. I can see in the mirror that it's very off. So just know at the end when I do mascara, I will clean that. Take my BK brush. And now there's not like that cream shade like in Desert Monsoon. So I'm just gonna go with no product on here and just kind of blend this out. It'll still do the same effect. Just the lighter cream shade would help diffuse it a little bit faster but that's okay, we'll just kind of work this in. See, I always, my eyes are shaped different, so I'm always bringing it up at different heights, but we're doing two different looks, so it's okay, they don't have to match today. Now that I have that diffused, let's see, I'm gonna go into Amethyst on the outer half and then Crystal in the inner half. So let's do that. Amethyst is very pretty. Yeah, this is kind of like the sheer topper I was thinking of. Desert Monsoon didn't have that as much. So you can see just, here's like the purple on this side and then the purple on this side. Again, they're two different palettes. I think that there's some crossover or clearly whoever the owner who made these palettes has a preference and I'm not mad at it. It's definitely my preference. This is just a little bit more ethereal, more duochrome than this. And now let's take Crystal, which is a little bit chunkier. It's kind of more textured, more flaky. Here's what it's looking like. This I could see there being fallout with if I'm not careful. So I'm gonna press really lightly. And even though there's like that shift because it's textured, you can see just like how much more vibrant than this side. This was not supposed to be a comparison between the two palettes duping each other. I just wanna point out, if you like both of these, maybe, you know, right now I would say you don't need both. Are you more of a brighter, lighter eyeshadow person? Because even the Desert Monsoon isn't dark, dark. It's very still, I think, well-rounded. This is just a lot brighter and lighter. So here's what Geo's is looking like. I'm now gonna take Rose Quartz and do that on the inner corner here. This one's more subtle than the other side. It's very interesting. I've never done one of these comparing the same brand to two different palettes before, and I'm kind of liking it to just see the differences between the two. Like this was so bright, I had to tone it down. And this side, like it's barely showing up this rose quartz. All right, so now let's do the lower lash line, going into rock and just following that over, 
Perfect. And then taking the flat definer brush and going into Terra to line the upper lash line. Let's see if I can do this without going too close. And just a little bit in this outer corner, which we'll see how that turns out because now my eye is watering just a little bit. But that is life. Okay, so here is the geode side, and then here is the desert monsoon. I'm now going to just clean up the outer corners, apply mascara, and I will be back to talk about my final thoughts. I just wanted to give you one final look before I put my glasses on now that mascara's on. I cleaned up the outer corners a little bit. So again, geodes on this side, desert monsoon on this side. But now let me scoot you back, and now we'll talk about my final thoughts. Let's first go over the brushes here. You know, I don't have really anything negative to say about them. To me, it's kind of like a neutral brush set. If you're looking for good brushes, I think that these are great. Again, get them at 40% off. I think $138 is a lot for six brushes, even though they're supposed to be made in Japan and they are natural hair brushes. They do, you know, or just pick and choose. I think you can clearly see like which ones I used and those will probably be the ones that I continue to use. So this smaller crease brush, that's kind of just good for blending, the smaller shader, the pencil brush, and then the flat definer here. This dome shape, I don't know if it's just me, but I don't really know what to do with this brush. I get them all the time and I always end up decluttering them. And then this medium shader, I have this five times over and I don't even have that many brushes, I think in comparison to other people. So these two, I wouldn't say are worth it, but I do actually like all four of these. This one is very unique to my collection. I have an angled one, but nothing quite this small and detailed. Pencil brush, mm. You know, I was talking about how I felt like the bristles were just shorter or longer, excuse me, to another pencil brush. So here's my MAC one just for comparison. And you can see what I was talking about. It's a lot thinner than the MAC and it's a lot longer. So I do like that it's a little bit tapered. It's a little less of a pencil brush. It's kind of like an in-between of a detailed brush and a pencil brush. So I do like that. I think it's really nice for the lower lash line. And then small shader is perfect for the inner corner. And this, if you have hooded eyes, is just a great size. I love brushes like this. I don't mind having duplicates of brushes like this. So those are my thoughts on the brushes. Now, when it comes to the palettes, I don't know what I was expecting, but I am so impressed. I am happy with both of these looks. And while I was putting mascara on, I was really trying to think like, which one do I prefer? Because I thought hands down, like with the packaging of this, I was gonna love the Geodes palette. And I do love this palette. However, I kind of think that I like the Desert Monsoon more. I think that this is just more of an everyday palette where I could bring this traveling with me and know that I could get a variety of looks, some just very soft natural looks or some more punchy looks with like the blue here or that green. This one is more, I would pull this out if I wanted like that special shade. These iridescent kind of colors are just so much brighter than the Desert Monsoon that I don't, I don't think I would wear this just every day or reach for it every day unless I wanted something that was really just like more bam. Now it's not a bam in your face, multi-chrome, duo-chrome like Terra Moons or any of those really specialty indie brands that are known for those special shades, but they still pack a punch and they're still both really nice. Those are just the difference between the two. I kind of was just thinking this was gonna be so much darker and grungier, but it is a good staple palette. I would recommend this one. Now, again, buy it when it's on sale. $41 is what these each retail for normally without a promo. And I would say that they're still worth more like 25. Overall though, happy with both of these. I've been really just trying to branch out and try more smaller brands rather than mainstream brands. That was my goal for 2023. And so far I've been impressed with 
every single purchase from indie brands. I'm really just so happy that I made that a goal. I do feel like What's Up Beauty has been sending out a lot of PR. I know that they just came out with a mascara. I'm not very interested with that, but I'm seeing more buzz around them because of the PR that they're sending out. I bought these, obviously. I'm not big enough to be getting PR, but I think that there's a good reason that people are talking about these. I think even if people got it in PR, people who are getting a lot of PR sometimes would maybe just skip over it, but I think that these are absolutely worth the money. If either of these color stories speak to you, I would say the formula is the same across both. They're both really nice. Granted, this is the first time that I've tried them. I will, of course, like I do with everything that I do a first impression on, test these out more and then end up putting them in a speed reviews or a palette ranking, something like that. So make sure you're subscribed for that because just so I can get more detailed thoughts rather than a first impression, but it is hard to impress me on eyeshadow because I'm just not an expert. So unless it's really standing out as being a superb formula, I sometimes don't have like the best opinions or detailed opinions, but these are really impressing me. I, I like this a lot. I'm looking at just like my bucket of eyeshadow palettes to review and I don't know if these are gonna beat these. These are just cute, staple, everyday, something special palettes. But I'm gonna just stop rambling about this. I will be testing them out more. I'm excited to test them out more. That's how I know that I really like something. So let me know down below in the comments if you tried these out. They're not new, new, new. So let me know if you picked these up, if you're interested in picking them up, if you think they're too boring. I'd love to hear all of your comments down below. That's where I'm gonna leave you all though. I hope you're having a great one and I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone.